some people can afford to buy a mega yacht without even looking at the price tag. I don't think price can be a factor. That would pretty much describe Roderick Aguilar and Trevor Summers. They're about to take a look at the 164-foot mine games. But right now, yacht designer Patrick Knowles is giving us a sneak peek. So why don't we take you to the room that I consider to be my pride and joy. It's called the on-deck dayhead. Uh, he means the toilet. We have a crystal, hand-cut crystal sink. Flooring is all inlaid, water jet cut, marble. It's a hand-painted mural that we commissioned to represent old Tuscany. Nice touch. The plumbing hardware and the door hardware is an antique gold. And one of the things that we could uh, pay special attention to is the triple latch, as you can see right here. And that will ensure that this door is rattle free. And this brings us into the master space room area. In this particular design, we have a split level, very unusual for a boat. This is out of the box thinking. This would be the area where they would come in and watch TV. Of course, the TV remote isn't just a TV remote. Should he need a drink? Should he have a special request or whatnot? I'll be there immediately. Chop, chop. And this decorative panel here, this is actually the back part of the master headboard. Ah, yes, the master bed, positioned at the front of the boat, giving it panoramic views of the water. A prime example of how nothing less than perfection is permissible on this yacht. And did you get this bed yet? Because the bed is all wrong. Of course. How could anyone have made a mistake like that? Slight detail, but it, it is nonetheless an important one. Remember, that's why they pay him the big bucks. Detail, detail, detail. Other details to notice are the gold-encrusted lamps, alabaster light fixtures, and so-called old-world textiles, owner's choice, of course. He loves traditional raised paneling. He loves inlaid wood. He loves coffered ceilings. Even the master bathroom has marble floors, monogrammed sinks, and engraved shower doors. The attention to detail is no different than it is anywhere else on board. And the detail extends into the service, too. Case in point, the champagne bucket on the bed. When they arrive on board, they really want to forget about all of the troubles and all of the headaches, and this allows them to absolutely enjoy that to the fullest. Service is very high aboard these yachts and constant, never ending. Currently, we travel with nine crew members. And that doesn't include the private chef. See, if you've been keeping track, there's three dining areas on this yacht. And what good are so many places to feast without someone like Chris Rosito to prepare the food? Doing three meals a day, typically for 20 people. So it's really like working in a restaurant, which I have most of my background in. But the most important person he cooks for is the owner. You know, he really likes the highest quality stuff, which is, which is what I like to work with. And high quality means high priced. And this is actually beluga caviar. $220 an ounce. And this is actually it's a, a white Italian truffle. $230 an ounce. You just need a few slices. That's lucky. Got to keep those costs down. It's nice to be able to do that. It's nice to be able to work with gourmet products and not have anyone looking over your shoulder saying, you can't spend this, you can't spend that. Who said the way to a man's heart was through his stomach? Clearly, that's the way to his bank account. You know, as long as people are happy, that's really what it's all about. But even pleasure has a price tag. In this case, here's the tally. One captain, nine crew members, and a personal chef, two million bucks a year. Building this boat from scratch, 40 million bucks. Ouch! Coming up, two millionaires tour the mind games. It looks like a French Quarter of uh, St. Charles home. Uh, does that mean they like it? Look at these details on the ceiling. Next, on Super Swank. <laughs> 